right, welcome to Wednesday. There is plenty to get into. Of course, uh, who are we going to be triggered by today? Is it going to be black people? Is it going to be Hispanic people, illegals? Is it going to be gay people, trans people? Children? I don't know. It, let's just get triggered by everybody. I think the thing that I could most be triggered by today, though, honest to God, it just makes me want to throw up in my mouth, is to watch Whoopi Goldberg give Sonny Hostin a lap dance. Let's see it. Oh, yeah, she's going to go right over there and do this. She's going to go right over there and do this. This is disgusting. No, she's doing first, this. No, first, I I, no, I'm doing it to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, let me get the hell out of the way. Well, my behind's not that big. First, I start, I'm looking at you. Okay? <laughs> you and then I, turn, I start to okay. turn. Go Let's look. Look. <laughs> and then it's, Oh, my God. And then it's like that. Oh my God! And I get to touch you too. And then I go back on the side. All right. You know that smells funny, Sarah Gonzalez. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I do have to say, I didn't expect Jabba the Hutt to be able to move that quickly. <laughs> so I didn't know Jabba could stand up on its own two feet. Yeah, I was impressed. Oh, she brought it over there and going to tell you how to do a lap dance. Mm. Mm, this First I look at you, and then as this is what I... Okay. Was, anyway, that's disgusting. Well, let's start our Wednesday <laughs> off. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah. It's dark in here, damn it. It's driving me crazy. I know. Does it feel dark in here to you today? A little bit. All yeah. right. Well, if you're listening by way of podcast... Um, it's dark in here. And I, I would beg of you to go leave us a rating and review uh, where podcasts are offered. I sat, sat down yesterday for a long time with the legendary Adam Curry. Uh, some of you may remember if you used to watch MTV, Adam Curry with all the big 80s hair, you know. He was, the, uh, he was one of the original MTV VJs. And then he is the father of podcasting. He is known as the pod father. He literally created podcasting. And uh, we are going to air that conversation, which was a fantastic chat. Uh, he and I have a lot in common, except he's got a lot more money <laughs> and fame um, and legendary pioneering stuff. But we have a lot personally in common. We both have Tourette's. Uh, if we're going to have that conversation on overtime, so make sure you're subscribing to Blaze TV. We're going to do it. We're going to break it into two parts this week and next week. Wow. You're going to learn some things you did not know about me, for one thing. Hmm. Uh, but some interesting, it was a very interesting conversation, Adam Curry. This guy is a rock star. I mean, he's done it all, Sarah. Well, I mean, I would just say I wasn't told that he was even coming in the building. I so don't know. I you, didn't know. Well, so, you, he must really like you. Well, here's here's the thing, and I'll let everybody know. This is the way it works around here at The Blaze before we get into the controversy of today. Uh, well, I'll, you know, CJ's always like, get right into the meat of the show. And I'm like, shut up, lady. <laughs> I like for people to get to know us a little bit. Mm -hmm. And and my dressing room, my green room, is right next to whoever Glenn typically has in yes. as a guest yes. that day. And their it's name. Next to the guest I, green room. First yeah. thing I do is I walk past the green room and I see whose name is mm -hmm. on the door. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, apparently, some of our talent and producers were having a frat party in that room yesterday. Yeah. They were doing a sketch comedy thing. I don't know. But Adam wasn't in there. So Chris said, Hey, Adam Curry's here. Do you want him? And I was like, Absolutely. Oh. As a child of the 80s, absolutely bring him in here. So, and then, anyway. It's a great conversation. That's great. But we talked, we we sat, we we sipped tequila and we talked for almost an hour. And so we're going to break it into two overtime segments. Awesome. Yeah. It's good stuff. You never know who you're going to see around here. That is true. That is you very true. You never freaking know, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I won't get into that. I was going to ask you this question, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to touch Texas politics right now. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about what's going to happen uh, this evening. It's probably happening right now as you're watching mm. this show. Uh, I, I got a feeling that our numbers will be way down. Mine tonight. too. There's there, uh, the, the the space is starting at six Eastern. Yeah, which is the exact same the exact time. Exact same my time show as starts. your show. So the Twitter <laughs> space. For those of you who don't know what Twitter Spaces are, once you go on there, you can create a space. You get on your phone and you can talk in this community, um, and it's kind of like a chat room, but you're actually talking. You could do that on Twitter tonight. Ron DeSantis is announcing that he is entering the race for 
a Republican candidate for presidency of the United States of America. Uh, he's making that announcement. I, I guess this is about a week or two longer than I thought he was going to wait. Mm-hmm. I think he's about 100 days too late mm-hmm. announcing. Mm-hmm. He should have gotten into this thing six months ago. It did honestly. take a long time. He's waited a long time. I understand he was in the Florida legislative session. He was taking care of those priorities. Honorable there, but this is running for president. Regardless of what your responsibilities are, if you're going to run for president, you got to get it at the right time. I think he waited six months too long. What, what are your overall thoughts with Ron getting in? Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see the... <sighs> the tension between the two different factions of the Republican Party. Um, I, I'm i with you. I think that I was shocked that he waited this long. But at the same time, I know that they also did have some laws that I think that they needed to amend in Florida yeah. uh, to help protect him. And I guess he was waiting for that. But it does feel like the momentum is still with Trump right now, especially with all of the persecution that he's facing and will continue to face, by the way, because the judge in his case set his next hearing for like March of 2024. Yeah. On purpose, I'm sure. Sure. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that part of it plays out because I do think that, you know, you can look at Ron DeSantis jumping in a little late, but you also look at the dynamics of Donald Trump and you just never know what's going to happen with him. You never know when he's <laughs> going to say something explosive. You never know if he's going to say something to alienate half of his supporters. Like you just never know. And I love the guy. So please don't come at me. I love him. I'm just saying he's just so spontaneous. You just don't know what you're going to get. They're going to come at you. Yeah. Just like they're going to well, come at I know. me. I know. And, and I know. let me, let I, me I clarify. I can't please everyone. You can't. And we'll. T- I want to talk about that because I think it's an important point we need to make. It's unfortunate reality we live in, but yeah. these are the circumstances. So Ron DeSantis will announce tonight in an interview with Elon Musk on a Twitter space. Uh, <laughs> interesting format. I think it's a smart format mm-hmm. because it's a middle finger to big tech and big, or I'm sorry, big to, media. Right. Uh, the mainstream media and say, you know, normally that would have been on a Fox News town hall or something like that. They're saying, nope. So you kind of see where Elon Musk is becoming the new Rupert Murdoch, Mm -hmm. Murdoch, maybe Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, in controlling the media narrative, at least for the conservative side of things. And Elon, who is not a right winger, uh, he still considers himself a liberal. He's hated by the far left people. Um, We'll see how that meets itself out. But I think it's smart that he's doing it the way he's doing it, Ron DeSantis. And Trump, who has not tweeted since he has been back on Twitter, Mm -hmm. allowed back on by Twitter, it would be interesting if right about the time the spaces kicks off, if Donald Trump decided to tweet. No, I want Donald Trump to join the space. (laughs) <laughs> i want donald trump to be a speaker in the very space. <laughs> very well has that ability to step in and join the space so you texted me first thing this morning mm-hmm. texted me we we're early morning texters you texted me first thing this morning i think you were talking to me off the ledge in life and you just said are you ready for desantis to enter the race i said well it's unfortunate that everybody is now going to be in full-blown meltdown mode which you said, and accurately so, well, it's good for us because it's going to give us a lot of good shit to talk about. Yeah. I I remind everybody, and if you follow me at Watch Chat on Twitter, I, late last night I tweeted out, remember everyone that the primary process is good for American elections. Mm-hmm. It is. Mm-hmm. We need them. It keeps everybody accountable, keeps everybody honest. You don't just... Set what you so everybody's like, oh, Ron DeSantis, he's a betraying Donald Trump and Donald Trump's support. He listen, I understand that Trump endorsed him. Trump did not make Ron no. DeSantis. No, you're yeah, if you, you are believing a narrative, if you believe that, he didn't. Ron DeSantis was had already been a congressman mm-hmm. for crying out loud. Well, also, he endorsed him, but he didn't plan Ron DeSantis's every move no. since he became governor. That no. was all Ron DeSantis. No. So, again, I came out last week or earlier this week. Was it Monday? I think, Chris, where I said that I think I think the way forward is I think we do need to reelect Trump. I me personally at this stage in the game, I think Trump is the guy because we're in this weird battle royale. And you need to send this dude in who just comes in like like a juggernaut mm-hmm. and just destroys the whole thing. Mm-hmm. People keep saying, how do we save our country? I, I think you put the guy back in there who's already been there. Um, as much destruction and chaos and craziness that has come out of him being in there. Not all his fault, certainly. Right. 
But I, I think you do that at this point. But my mind's open to be swayed and changed. So when you say those things, and again, I'm not anti-Ron DeSantis. I think Ron's a great person. I think he's a great man. I think he's a great family. I, I love his wife. I think I think he's, his messaging is on point. I love that he's anti-woke. Uh, I literally can't find anything wrong with the guy other than, again, the narrative wants you to believe that he's some Bush crony, that he's big right. government, that he's, you know, well, I mean, yeah, the people who support him, they don't necessarily want Trump because he's so anti-establishment. But I, I don't think you just throw him into the soup because they support him. Yeah, I mean, well, that narrative is just so bizarre to me because they're calling him rhino, but all of the other Republican candidates are attacking him from the left, you'll right. notice, right? Including Donald Trump, Nikki Haley, all of them are saying Ron DeSantis is too harsh on abortion, right? Like he he uh, he signed a law with, that's what, six weeks? That's too harsh, Donald Trump said. Trump said that. That's not rhino. I mean, right. that's more that's more far right than than apparently Donald Trump is comfortable with. Right. They keep attacking him uh, on Disney. Trump and Nikki Haley both attacked Ron DeSantis for him going after Disney for trying to indoctrinate our yeah. children. I just think, look, I, I don't know who I'm voting for in the primary because I'm very open right now. I know it's not going to be Nikki Haley or Tim Scott. Um, but what I do know is... It's not a good look, I think, to be attacking him from the left in the primary. It's just a very bizarre thing to be attacking him from the left while calling him a right now. Yeah. And the Nikki Haley's of the world who, again, it was a dumb move on her part by saying, hey, Disney, if you want to move to South Carolina, that's... I mean, uh, what are you thinking? No, nah, it's not good. But I think that she is jockeying for a vice president spot. I hope un not. I under can't Trump. even... Oh. I, I hope that Trump would not do something like that. But... Well, you know. I also hope that Trump doesn't attack Ron DeSantis too much, because at the end of the day, if Ron DeSantis gives it his all and the Republican primary voters decide that they want to stick with Trump, I sure would like to see a Trump DeSantis ticket. Well, I don't know that that's reasonably possible. You don't think? I don't think so. I just don't think it's logical. I just don't. I think I think it would be an implosion. I, I just think that there's too much there. Now he again, needs someone more submissive. And the other he does. And the other thing is is going well, somebody who knows what role they're playing. Mm. Because there's nothing there's nothing wrong or necessarily submissive in, to use that term in being the vice president of the United States per se. Mm -hmm. But you do have to know that role you're playing. Right. 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 You have to know that role you're playing. It's not, hey, I'm here because I'm the next president. Mm -hmm. No, I'm here to be the vice president so you don't wind up like Kamala Harris, who is the border czar and the AI czar and all the czars and does jack shit, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because her deal is I'm just I'm she's just figurehead yeah. at that point. Yeah. She's just occupying space, taking up oxygen. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I look at this thing and I hope and I, and I know I'm hoping against reason that everybody could look at this thing and say, OK, the primary process is a good thing. Iron sharpens iron. We should call each other out on these things and and hold each other accountable on these deals instead of you know i put that post out there and people are like well, trump's gonna mop the floor with him i'm like okay but you need this guy mm -hmm. you need ron DeSantis in america yeah we yeah. all do yes. I, whether you're voting for trump or not you need a ron DeSantis. now i've got people who will send me messages and they go to my website at watchchad.com that's where all the fun stuff is and they'll send me messages about how disappointed they are in me and it's like you're disappointed in me for what talking about it for just talking about it i'm telling you the prime and i've gotten them emails this week after the whole trump statement that i made on monday i mean there's you know people want to call me you know everything from you know, a Target shopper to Dylan Mulvaney for saying the things that I say. I'm just telling you, you better think critically and you better figure out what's coming out of your mouth if it's being if it's coming out, if you're being induced by the narrative. I don't understand what it is that they would prefer instead. I mean, the primary process, like nobody is owed anything in right. this country's political system. This isn't a, an oligarchy. Right. This isn't supposed to be a monarchy where we right. have someone who's just supposed to be the next in line. So it's really frightening to me that there are people who still think someone in politics is owed the next step. That's how we got Joe Biden. Exactly. Exactly. That's how we got Joe, because he was the next guy Correct. in line, yep. the least offensive, so to speak. He'd paid his dues for 50 years. He's been the vice president. 
And he was the good old boy that was supposed to be the chairman of the board. And on top of that, Donald Trump was the spoiler to their last one, which was Hillary Clinton. Right. Previous to that, it was always Hillary Clinton that they said, well, she's owed that. She's been paying her dues. It's her turn. Right. Donald Trump was the spoiler to that. So it's just weird to me that the same people who supported that spoiler are now like, well, he's owed this. Yeah. You have to be loyal to him. He's the next in line. It's like, that's not yeah. how this political system is supposed to work. And you guys all agreed with that six years ago, seven years ago. Right. That's a very good point, Sarah. That's why I love you. Thank you. Yeah. Every once in a while. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to jump on that narrative hard on my, in my personal life. I'm going to really seriously, because you're not owed that. No. You're not owed that. He, Ron DeSantis isn't owed 2028. No. He's nobody not, is. Nobody, I mean, listen, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, all right, let's go to a break so we can come back and make fun of gay people. All right. <laughs> Folks, I can't, I, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't believe the dire headlines that we're facing in the world today, though, honestly. Everywhere you look, things are falling apart. That's why the smartest investment you can make right now is not with it's, listen, it's in, it's in your family's food security. Sounds weird, but the reality is you might not be able to find food when the next disaster strikes. Grocery stores are going to be empty because roads are going to be closed. Trucks won't be able to make deliveries. And when that happens, you need emergency food in full supply. That's why I urge you to grab a three-month emergency food kit from My Patriot Supply, who is the nation's largest preparedness company. And when you order today, you'll save $200 on each kit you need. And having these kits means your family will stay fed while others stand in food lines. So don't delay. Order your three-month emergency food kit today. Save $200 per kit. It's easy to order. Go to preparewithchad.com. I'm so glad they brought that website back. Preparewithchad.com. I'm so vain. You're going to get fast and free shipping, and it's going to be discreet when it arrives. Do it today, or you'll regret it tomorrow. Go to preparewithchad.com. We'll be right back. All right, I was looking for something. I um, first of all bring up the Truth Social deal that Trump put up there. Let's show that deal. Not even sure if I can. Re oh, there's no way I can possibly look. Read. Rob De Sanctimonious came to me asking for help. He was losing badly by 31 points to Popular Agriculture Commissioner Adam Putnam. He was getting ready to drop out of the race. Ran a <laughs> terrible campaign. Ron told me he had one last chance. My support and endorsement, which Putnam and everyone else wanted, also. I gave it to Ron, and the race was over. In one day, he went from losing badly to winning by a lot. With three large Trump rallies, he in all caps, won the general election in an upset. Disloyal! Exclamation point, exclamation point. Yeah, I wish Trump wouldn't do stuff like that, but <laughs> that he's going to. Yeah. yeah. He's going to. Um, and, and it is, there is some disloyalty there. There is. But he he's not owed anything. He's not owed anything, I agree. Um, I'm just saying, but the, the, the point I'm trying to make is, people tend to think, and you think about politics like you think about your personal life. Like, I did a favor for my neighbor and my neighbor shouldn't put that fence up one foot over on my property. He's like, mm -hmm. no, no, no. You, you guys are, you're thinking about this all wrong. That's just not how politics works. Right. Which, I mean, it shouldn't be. That's, that's not how the political game works. Yeah. And you judge it based off of how you think the real world works with your interpersonal relations. Mm -hmm. That, this is the game. I mean, I would say maybe that is how some politics work, but that is a, like a bug yeah. of the system. Yeah. It shouldn't be that way. Right. It's so, um, you know, look, I mean, people forget, boy, our memories are so short. I know y'all want to talk about gay people and we will. <laughs> I'm, you, I'm ready. You, your memories are so short. You forget how toxic it was between Trump and Ted Cruz. Oof. I don't I mean, forget. I still have PTSD. Just from that. toxic over that deal. And now look, Ted Cruz come out and support Trump all day long in terms of his policies mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things like that. I don't know how it'll come out in this primary, but if yeah. someone called your wife ugly, would you I mean would you I mean, would you ever support um, them? <laughs> so I was, I was scrolling through Facebook this morning and I come across this ad. I wish I could find it now because I would love to read some of the comments. Um but this is a company it's a product called Colon Broom, which you can imagine what that is. Um, colon Broom is it's a cleanser. It's a it's a cleanse that you take, and you shit your pants. You shit all over everything. And so they it's it's coming up on June, so everybody's putting out there. You know, I take pride. What does Ew, it say? Oh, I take pride in my body. My weight smoothly fell from 205 to 177, but it says between 5 to 20 pounds of waste in the gut. Well, that, that's true. 
You're carrying a lot of shit in you. But they immediately, I take pride. The comments underneath that, just by slapping the rainbow on there, people are sick to death of this. They are sick to death of this. Now, once again, let me be clear. You want to sleep with somebody, you want to put your thing in somebody's rear end, hopefully they took some colon broom. Hopefully <laughs> they did a cleanse before you guys well, decide to get intimate with the anus, okay? I mean, hopefully they're all cleared out before you do that. One would hope. hope <laughs> listen, that 5 to 20 pounds of doo-doo you're carrying <laughs> is nothing, it, like there's no bigger turnoff uh, for me uh, when I'm trying to get intimate after a, after a nice bottle of Merlot or Cabernet God. before me and Ray climb into the sheets <laughs> together. All right? So before I get it on, I hope that you've taken your colon cleanse. But there's a lot of Ugh. people who buy these cleanses and everything, like the colon broom, <laughs> the poo cleaner, your butthole cleaner, <laughs> it's got to be gay pride. Like there's so many jokes with I mean, this whole thing. But the comments... Fair. So many people under well, it's fitting <laughs> is what it is. It's is fair, fair and fitting. Fair. So many people on the on the comments were going, "Oh my God!" Like we, there's no way we'll buy this now. Now I sat there and I said, "What is it about this whole Bud Light phenomenon?" Let's just call that what mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. They have now, as of today, reported their lowest stock deal in 2023. Uh, I think they're trading at about fifty-seven dollars a share. Um, Great news. Anheuser-Busch still is, they're a robust company, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. People will always be able to drink their beer. But again, Bud Light. People aren't buying Bud Light. They've got vouchers. There's buybacks with the distributors. Uh, Bud Light, this is now two months of the Bud Light debacle. That's amazing. They thought, the guy who's on Shark Tank, the ball-headed guy, I don't watch Shark Tank, so I don't know. But the Kevin o Maybe. You could say his name, I still wouldn't know. Okay. I don't know these rich people. Okay. But I want to know. I saw the interview with him and he goes, dude, we thought, you know, normally it takes it's 48 hours of outrage and then 48 hours later it's forgotten. Mm -hmm. So normally when people get pissed off at a product or a company, it's about a four day cycle. This is two months. This is wow. a phenomenon. Wow. This is two months now of this happening. So when you look at it, you go, why? Well, I, I want to tell you in a nutshell why. And it's a lot simpler than all these wild ideas you guys have. You're cramming it down our throat. No, no. Here's the deal. They're literally forcing you to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. You want to be left alone. But you were forced to talk about it. You might have to, you, you don't want to have to talk about it with your kids. You don't want to have to talk about it with your significant other. You don't want to have to talk about it with Aunt Susie over Sunday dinner. You don't. You do not want to have to talk about it. You don't want to have to pull a Bud Light out and somebody go, "Oh, look at you! You're taking colon broom, aren't you?" <laughs> you don't want to deal with any of that stuff. And these companies decided to double down mm -hmm. and really hammer it. So now they did it with the Ford Raptor commercial. They've done it with. Target, which I mean, now Target had these emergency meetings yesterday saying, move it to the back of the store, <laughs> which gay stuff is usually in the back. <laughs> so they said, move all the gay stuff. Get Let's put Satan in the back of the store. Mm -hmm. You can still buy your Satan crap, but go back there to the Just back of the store and come, buy it. Coming through the back door. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and good for them. I say shut them down. You want thousands of people to lose their jobs. and No, no, we, I, we, there's other jobs. Mm -hmm. Again, there's other companies you need to be working for. I know that sounds heartless and cold, but I work for myself for a reason. Because I don't want to be subject to corporate America who's out there telling me how I got to believe, how I got to spend my dollars, and all of the ideologies that I'm supposed to buy into. Because the only people who are profiting from these things are these big one world globalist cabal puppeteer ringmasters that are doling out the ESG scores and making sure that their social credit is in good standing. And so you look at, my God, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Mm. You talked about this also on your show yesterday mm -hmm. where, you know, you got the, you know, the sisters of whatever yeah. consistent indulgence Radical. or constant or whatever the hell they yeah. call themselves. Yeah. And so they made an apology. Okay, we'll let the we'll let the drag nuns come back out here and and play that clip real quick. If you got them, you oh got the, if you got the drag deal dancing on Jesus. 
Oh. Uh, well, so here we rough. go. This so you got rough. Jesus on a crucifix, or what's supposed to be, and here comes the high heels up over the top, and you're going to give Jesus on the cross a lap dance. These are these people that the Los Angeles Dodgers, which in case you didn't understand what I was saying, the professional National League baseball team of Los Angeles, California, the Dodgers, uh, they're, this is the people that they're inviting back out. So, again, they're probably fortunate for the company, for the organization that they're in California. Because California's weird and they'll put up with this kind of nonsense. I mean, but maybe. This, but but, the, but I, I think people even there are sick of it. Well, because who's going to the to, to baseball games in California? Right. I don't know that there's many. Well, the Oakland A's can't get a crowd. <laughs> well, like, Oakland yeah. A's can't get a dozen people in the stadium. I'm not sure that there's like a, a huge trans community baseball fan. Yeah. Uh, you know. Well, going and that's on. the great point because because uh, you know I'm sure there's a lot of gay dudes out there that love baseball pants. You know, guys in polyester. <laughs> I'm sure there's a They're lot of guys that appreciate that. They're watching on TV. Yeah. Yeah. They're wa- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They get a much better view on TV. Yeah. Um, but I just, like, I have to believe that they might get a bigger, they might get a good gay turnout on Pride Night. After that, yeah. it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, on Pride Night. All right, it's enough of that garbage. I, but, but I, so you have that, you have Target, you have, they're doubling down. And as you get to June... You're you, not even there. It's, it, you're not even there. I mean, they're rolling it out, and you're going to see more and more and more and more and more because they're gonna. They're not going to stop. Now they know that if they keep up the pressure of putting out this messaging, they think that eventually folks like us are just going to cave. Right, right. That's People exactly that what believe in traditional values, American values, finally they're just going to give up and be like, you know what, we're tired yeah. of it. But I don't think we're tired of it. No. I think we're here for it. I think so, too. I, I think you're exactly right. I think that that's why Target initially did what they did because yeah. they thought, we're Target. Where else are you going to shop? Yeah. And they're like, oh, I see people on, on social media say, okay, okay, girl, you don't go shop there. I'm sure they'll miss your few dollars. Listen, dude, you have no idea how much a housewife spends in Target or is capable of spending <laughs> no, in car- no Target kidding. every year. <laughs> no kidding. That's, that's like a million dollars. Right. That's like, it's like, and then, and then you have, you know, these, re- well... Uh, <laughs> I wanted to call some people names, but you have these idiots out there who were saying, oh, look, the Walmart crowd suddenly not going to Target anymore. All right. You believe that. You believe that. And let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Because, uh, you know, you, you have these people out there, these so-called comedians that want to make fun of blue collar, hard work in middle America, the backbone of America, the people that are out there making your cars run, you know, making sure that your goods are getting delivered, making sure that your shelves are stocked. You're going to make fun of those people and say, oh, those folks that like to have their barbecue and their beer on Sundays and get up and work six days a week and maybe take their family to church on Sunday morning. You're going to criticize those people and say, oh, the Walmart crowd. Well, you're going to find out real quick, you elitist mother just how much the Walmart crowd supports your lazy f***ing fat ass. And you're going to realize real quick how hungry you get when all of a sudden we pull the plug on your little bullshit game. So y'all can kiss my ass on that deal. I'm going to stand with the Walmart crowd. I'm going to stand with the blue collar people that when you kick them in the teeth, they get up and beat the f***ing shit out of your ass. That's who I'm going to stand with. Because I tell you what, I don't cross those people. I don't cross those people. Mm-hmm. They ain't scared. You know what? You kill them. You kill them. They ain't lost nothing. <laughs> they know they're poor. They know they're broken. You know what? They know how f***ing hard they worked to get that dollar in their pocket before they go spend it with your faggot ass. <laughs> How's that? Wow. Well, you're not wrong. How's that? <laughs> All right. Well, we've been talking to you for a while now about Texas Superfood. <laughs> Uh, (laughs) 
Uh, we've been talking to you for a while about Texas superfood. This is what happens when you get a naturopathic doctor like Dennis Black, who's not only a Texan, he's a veteran, he's also an expert in helping people get healthier. This is what happens when he puts his mind to helping make your diet better. Texas superfoods is vine ripe and antioxidant rich and uses raw fruits and vegetables. And whether you're using it in a capsule or a powder form, you're going to get all the benefits of putting the right nutrients from the right fruits and vegetables into your body. Look, <coughs> you know, I don't eat right. Good Lord, I don't eat right. I'm trying, but you don't eat right either. So let's stop pretending that we do. The beautiful thing is in this day and age, you could supplement your diet with healthy things like Texas Superfood, and you go on about your day just a little bit healthier. Look, I'm taking Texas Superfood. I love it. I feel great. I don't worry as much about my diet because I know that with Texas Superfoods, my body has what it needs to keep me functioning. I'm literally eating the stuff at this point. I love it. Uh, give them a try today. Go over to TexasSuperfood.com. That's TexasSuperfood.com, and we'll be right back. During the break, Chris sent me um, Target. Boy, that is a steady downtrend in their stocks right there. Boy, that thing just whoop. Just wow. look at that. I don't know if you just, that little red line goes right on down. I love zoop, that. Zoop, zoop. Keep uh, it up. People have to stay strong and keep it up. And, you can and, find the and, stuff that you get at Target. You can find in other places. You, can. you might have to go to three different stores to get your groceries and your clothing and your home decor or toiletries or whatever. But it's easily doable and completely worth it. I uh, let me clear, let me clear the air on a couple of things. First of all, let me go back to these. We got people. People work for these companies. They're innocent. Okay. Well, yes, but you're not. Okay, you're not. If you know that a company uh has an ideology that they're pushing and you continue to take your income from them uh there are more important things than having a job mm -hmm. there are like having mm -hmm. a soul mm -hmm. uh like having a conscience and and having a backbone to stand against some things and say no i'm not going to be a person who peddles this stuff um i'm not going to peddle this ideology and and i'm not condemning you i'm not judging you i'm just saying don't come at me for right. being the voice right who's calling this stuff out because our society's gone on long enough now with, with this decline. And it takes people like Sarah, it takes people like me, people like this network to say, no, no, enough is enough is enough. I understand it. this might affect your bottom line. Yeah, I understand how, what happens when a bottom line gets affected. Of all people, trust me, I understand being demonetized and deplatformed yeah. and cancel culture. I, of Same all thing. people understand, and I got, I got the numbers to prove it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I I have been penalized for being conservative. I've been penalized monetarily mm -hmm. for I mean I got I got places around this country that won't let me in the door, won't mm -hmm. book me. Uh, social media will disenfranchise me. I, I mean I used to make a lot of money off of social media. Now I don't make any off of it anymore. Yep. 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 I don't. And I'm okay with that because again they're not they're not a, a, a thing that I align my values with. Well, I also think, I mean, logistically speaking, if everyone migrated to other stores, there would be more opportunities at other stores. So I don't think it's the binary choice of just like, right. oh, well, you either shop at Target or people lose their jobs and have no other place to go to. Yeah. There would be other opportunities at those other locations. Yeah. And you, you're you able to come in and say, listen, I have experience in marketing and right. retail and all of these things. Hey, we're going to do this. This is a parallel economy thing. I believe in it. And mm -hmm. I guarantee you people are going to pull you in and mm -hmm. say, hey, let's hire this person because of their expertise. Yep. That is the world we're headed to. We're not there now. But I think that's where we've got to be headed, you yeah. know? It's a mess, dude. I, it, it, listen, I feel for anybody that's, it's hard. Life is hard enough. People struggle to go out there and make their money and stuff like that. But I just, boy, I just, ooh, I just get angry. Ooh, I get pissed when people start talking about the Walmart crowd's going to stop shopping at Target. Ugh. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm just, just give me the blue collar, hardworking people, man. Yeah. I don't, I, these, these jackasses in Beverly Hills ain't ever done anything for me. Right. You know? And, and Why also am I they, bowing down to Lizzo? They despise you. They hate my guts. They wish that you didn't exist. Oh, and here's the thing, too. Here's the thing, too. They don't care about your kids. <laughs> they don't care about your kids. They don't care about you. They don't care about your voting record. They don't care about Joe Biden or anybody else. They don't. No. They don't. They don't care about any of that stuff. 
And listen, it's everywhere. Play that Play that clip. This is from, uh, I ran across this this morning. This was from 2022 for North Face. Now, North Face, right? They're supposed to, I mean, I understand they're a woke company. We know they're a woke company, but this is like an outdoor brand. This was their Pride Month thing from 2022. Play that little commercial. Oh, gosh. This guy. Nature lets you be who you are. Who you are. Uh, oh. No. No. Hi. All right, that's enough of that one. That's enough of that one. Now they go on and it gets super gay. All right, it and gets super gay. About, yeah, because Gayer they're having these, they're basically having these gay rallies across the country oh, in the name of North Face. That's the whole point. And and that guy, yeah, he's anyway. Well, right in the face of everything that's going on with all this other stuff, they just came out with their 2023 North Face commercial. Play that clip. Hi, it's me, Patty Gonia, a real life homosexual. And today I'm here with the North Face. That's we not are here satire. I invite you to come out in Stop. nature with us. Wow, Aww. this is nice. We like to call this little tour the Summer of Pride. This tour has everything hiking, community, art, lesbians, lesbians making Sodomy. art. Last year, we gay saw shade across the nation and celebrated pride across the nation with hundreds of you across the nation. This year, we're back, back, back again with two new stops. Back, back, Atlanta, back. GA. Why? Because you're there. In Salt Lake City, we're coming for you. Patty, can we go? Of course. This year, all these fabulous speakers will be coming from inside yeah. this TV to a nature near you. So come outside and celebrate the beautiful LGHG TV community. I don't even know. All right. Oh, you're so triggered by somebody that's gay. I, no, yo, oh, North Face is going to make you gay. No, again, I go back to my original point. I don't. I shouldn't have to deal with that every time I turn it on. I should not have to deal with someone's sexuality every time I want to buy a damn coat. Right. 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 I, I, I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. People are like, well, why don't you just look the other way? It's like, well, I can't because you're cramming it down my throat. I and when you have a rainbow dildo everywhere I look, right. maybe I just don't want to fucking see it. Right. I walk into a Target store and it's like I walked into Rainbow Bright. <laughs> I, like I've suddenly walked into, you know, unicorn world. I, I, it doesn't, no, I'm not afraid of being made homosexual. My God, I've done enough things in my life that you might think I'm a homosexual. <laughs> I don't worry about any of that stuff. I've found myself in certain scenarios where I was like, damn, that's a, wow, that's going on right there across the room. <laughs> I have found myself in those situations. I understand that. But again, that's if you chose to walk into that room right, right. and put yourself in those circumstances. You're choosing for us, and you're choosing for our kids. Mm -hmm. You're exposing a bunch of crap that I can handle it. Again, what y'all don't understand is, Sarah and I, we can handle it. Right. But we're trying to speak up for some people who should not be forced to handle it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's I that mean, simple. well, I would say uh, I'm going into the lion's den recording all of these disgusting drag shows that make me want to take 10 showers afterwards. Of course I can handle it. Yeah. Of course I can. Yeah. We're trying to make this world a better place for our kids so that they don't have to walk into a Target and be inundated with, you know, too queer for here. Yeah. And by the way, all of my gay friends think this shit's stupid yeah, too. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> they're, they're not aligning themselves with the whole deal either. Because guess what? Uh, companies like North Face and Target and Bud Light, they don't care about homosexuals either. Well, also normal gay people, their whole their identity isn't who they have sex with. Here's what Normal, I, sane gay people, that's not no, their identity. No, that's exactly right. Here's what I said. I said, I said, I said, so you're going to be okay with corporate America continuing to marginalize certain groups of people by the sheer fact that they're pandering to them with products that are supposed to make these groups of people feel important, included, and accepted. In actuality, they're attempting to build marketing schemes to make more money off of those communities by reminding everybody that they are indeed different not like the rest, and most people in the world just want to be left alone, but corporate America is forcing people to have a conversation whether they want to have it or not. So now you get to climb under the magnifying glass while the rest of us discuss your sexuality or your persuasion or, or your orientation when all you really want to do was live your life. Mm -hmm. 
just like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. While the fact of the matter is that these companies don't care about you or me or our kids, but they do care about making sure their puppet master ringleaders that are in control of their social credit scores stay satisfied. Yep. That's what I wrote at six o'clock this morning. Because that's the shit I'm thinking about. I care. <laughs> right there. Ah, all right. <sighs> Cleaning your guns. It is a necessary hassle in life. I want you to do it, but I want you to do it better. I want you to do it more efficiently. I want you to enjoy the meditation that comes from cleaning your gun. It is a dirty job. You got to do it. The patches are messy. The rope bores don't really work that well, but I found a better solution, and it's Barrel Buddy. Uh, listen, I love these things. Barrel Buddy actually compresses to fill the interior of your gun's barrel, making sure to clean the rifling grooves, and it comes in seven different sizes to match any caliber fire. Firearm. Barrel Buddy is composed of polymers that don't leave behind residual particles, so it's safer as well. And it cleans by scrubbing and collecting particulates, then it absorbs any remaining residue and buffs the interior surface clean. You can even lubricate your firearm while you are cleaning it. So cleaning your gun is a really important step in being a responsible gun owner, and Barrel Buddy is a totally new concept and a better way of taking care of your firearm. So get some today. I guarantee you're going to love them. Go to BarrelBuddy.com. That's BarrelBuddy.com, and we'll be right back. So let's go a little bit further because I might as well. I got this stuff here. Um, do you see the one where they burn in the Bibles at the trans rally? No. Yeah, play play that clip real quick, George. No. Pull it up there. Yeah, they're actually um, burning Bibles. Liberals burn Bibles during a fire bin in Calgary and get caught. <laughs> That's not very nice. That's kind of. It's kind of. I think there's a fire ban right now. Yeah, isn't there a fire ban? Right. Oh, you just got caught. You just got caught. All right, that's enough. Now, again, you got a bunch of kids that are confused. They're stupid. They're doing dumb things. And again, now that you give them something to rally around, that's stupid as well, and it's not a good deal. But again, it's a slap in the face of a Judeo-Christian ethic that our country was founded upon. People right. still hold to those values. Um, again, I, I don't go out burning your trans displays. Well, they claim that you're book burning because you don't want pornographic content in school libraries. Right. And that's supposedly book burning. But they are literally burning Bibles. Right. And that's just freedom of expression. Right. Well, it's just like this big thing that's coming out right now that they, in one place, they, they banned the girl, uh, Amanda, whatever her name was, that did the poem at Joe Biden's mm -hmm. inauguration. And they said, no. They, they said, oh, they banned her poem in schools because they're racist. And they, No, what they did was they said it's not appropriate for elementary schools, put it in the middle schools. Right. See, that's not book burning no. or book banning. No. That's no. not, that's none of that stuff. There also aren't playboys in school libraries. No, there's a reason that's, for all that's of those not, That's not book banning. And, and can I be real clear? Because you and I get this attack all the time. Well, what about the churches? Churches oh have pedophiles. Goodness. That's right, but we don't take our kids to church in order to expose them mm -hmm. to a grown person's sexuality. If they get exposed to a grown person's sexuality, then it is not only an anomaly, but it's, an, it's a tragedy, and we take care of that. Those we things, call that out. Those things happen in the dark right. at the churches, right? In the church, it happens in the dark. In the trans community, it happens in the light. Yeah, you're promoting it. Right. We don't we don't go to church to promote that. Right. We don't say, hey, let's bring the kids up here. Now the youth pastor is going to dance around and drag. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're doing. Do those things happen? They happen everywhere. And I, for one, could say that I have consistently and specifically called out the schools yep. and the churches yep. and the Boy Scouts and yep. these organizations, you know, I don't care if it's the Little League where an adult is exposed to a child and something happens there, that person should, they can go to the wood chipper too. Mm -hmm. Stick them all in there. Mm -hmm. We call all of that stuff out. There's nobody with conservative values that are legitimate, who have a real platform, who are excusing the churches. right. right. Well, you know, the Dodgers have a drag show on a crucifix. I am all for equality when it comes to the wood chipper. Yeah. Just start one foot at a time. Yeah. You know, so. Put them all in there. Uh, how are you, Sarah? <laughs> how, how are you? Fantastic. This may be the last show we ever do. I don't know. No, wait, what? No. Because I said faggot. 
<laughs> well, you just said it again, so. I'll say it over and over again. I'm okay. If it triggers you into thinking and paying attention, and, and, and you be mad at me. I'll be your scapegoat. <coughs> oh, but, oh, because you missed the, I missed the message because he said a word I disagree with. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> nice cutaway, George. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I'm sick of it. All right. Hey, listen, since the uh, early days of Blaze TV, we've been fortunate to work with the team at Relief Factor. Now, at the time, they brought an unknown anti-inflammatory to the marketplace that they had tested in their hometown of Seattle, and it had shown a remarkable ability to reduce pain for different types of chronic ailments. I have fallen in love with Relief Factor because it is an all-natural alternative to pain medications that I trust to keep to keep uh, me out of pain. And inflammation is is not the only you know it's not only the chief cause of pain, but is also a factor in many other diseases. And I feel better that Relief Factor is always working to keep my inflammation markers in check. So there's hundreds of thousands of people who order Relief Factor every month and about 70% reorder because it works and you can order a trial pack for only $19.95 to see if it will work for you to reduce your pain. Go to relieffactor.com to order or call them 800, the number four relief. That's 800 for relief or go to relieffactor.com. Relief Factor, feel the difference. We'll be right back. All right, I want to save a little time for this last little segment so I can remind everybody that I got some shows coming up. ChadBraitherLive.com. Going to be in uh, the Tampa area Friday and Saturday night. The early shows, I think, are sold out. So the 9.30, Sarah. Whew, whew. Drink your Red Bull and buckle up. Let's go. Yeah, the thing about comedy clubs is there's a lot of walk-up traffic. A lot of people get their tickets last minute, come out and hang out and party. and Yeah. Well, don't wait until the last minute because oh, they're going to sell, gonna sell, All they're gonna sell out too, sell out, so yeah. go get them. But what I did notice, if you want to come to one of the early shows and you, you want to feel sneaky, sneaky like a slithery snake, <laughs> is if, <laughs> is if you, there's a whole handicap row, like four rows back, oh. and you can click on that and buy those tickets right just walk there. in with a limp. Just go with a limp or yeah. tell them you can't read. Bring your uh, spare crutches. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a handicap and then the handicap's assistant. So, there, so there's a person that could sit by you. And so there's a space for it. And I don't, so I was looking this morning. I was like, oh, there's a whole row, like in the fifth row of the auditorium that they've got set up for access or whatever. Yeah. That's a loophole. It's, it sort of kind of is. <laughs> so, you know, it's Florida. I'm sure you have a wheelchair somewhere. Right. You know? <laughs> It's going to be a good time. Uh, and, hey, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk about this whole Ron DeSantis thing. Tomorrow we'll know more, right? Yeah. So, yeah. all right. Do not forget to check out Sarah's show every single weeknight, The News and Why It Matters, with her and her uh, varied panel of guests. So, um, and all the other stuff you got going on. Yes, AmericanBeautyBySarah.com and uh, RealWomensClub.com as well. Bring it on. Yeah. Bring it on. So uh, don't forget, subscribe, blazetv.com slash Chad. Use promo code Chad. Check me out on all my socials. Make sure that you are keeping up with what I'm posting on Facebook. Is that still a thing? I think it is. But you got to go looking for the posts. Uh, and also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Watch Chad and Sarah Gonzalez TX. Yes. And there's no H in Sarah. There's no H in Sarah. All right. Tomorrow's Thursday. We'll get off the rails. We'll see you then. Love you. God bless you. Bye. Thank you.